Um, yeah, just a quick video. I'm going to have a fish tomorrow. Um, been pretty slow and tight out there, I've been told. I went out yesterday, got a couple panties and a nice red and a whole heap of nice size nanny guys. So come back with a good feed, but um, it's fishing pretty tough at the moment. Yeah, and also I'd like to thank everyone. I said at the beginning of the year I'd like to get 500 subscribers by the end of the year and uh, yeah, about a week ago I made it to 500. So I thank all you guys out there. So thumbs up to you guys and thanks very much. But let's get into it and uh, see what sort of rods I take out on a regular basis. First of all, I uh, usually take a small 3000 reel. This one's from Catch. Anyway, um, I take a 3000 out, fairly light, you know, two to four kilo rod and I set it up with a squid jig. Um, and that always has to come out. You never know when you're gonna throw that. Here's another real small three kilo rod, but it's geared up with a 5,000. Um, I can always put that on another rod or this rod. And this actually reel from catch has 15 kgs of drag, so that'll pull a kingy up if I want to. Um, but I set that up with a plastic, and uh, that always comes out with me. Then um, I stray line a bit, I bait, um, probably 50% of the time instead of lure, and I really enjoy it. Uh, I do some deep water stuff, and I also, this time of year, coming into the end of winter, and spring, when the snapper push in a bit closer, I will do some in close stuff. Now in saying that, I can fish for snapper and I can fish for them all year round and I'm, I can find them all year round. Not necessarily in 12 meters of water like you read the books or you see people fishing on the internet or on TV. I, I will push out to 65 meters and if, if I want to even further, um, and some guys on the weekend, I believe we're hitting them at 120 metres out the front here. So I believe they're always here, not in huge numbers, but they're always here. And you just got to work a little bit harder to get them. And I'm not always follow the book that says this time of year, you're going to get them in this depth. Well, yeah, you will more than likely, but they're here all the time. So my advice to guys that like chasing snapper or getting into snapper Fish the snapper season, what they call the snapper season, but also try going out a little bit wider and fishing for them if the currents aren't too strong. But anyway, so to get on to stray lining, um, I usually use 4,000 or 5,000 or 4,500 4, reels for stray lining. I use just spinning rods, like four, six kilo, seven kilo spinning rods. Um, and that's all my setups. Like I can show you another one here and I can show you another one here. Okay, that's just a Stratic on a T-curve. And uh, these ones are here are catch spinning rods with Shimano um, Stratics, the newer Stratics. So yeah. Um, the only real difference in my stray lining is I have two different setups. Now I have a circle hook, just one big circle hook, doesn't matter, it can be a you know, 50, 60, 70, right up to about 10. And then another setup I do is a gang hook, and very rarely I use three gang hooks. Um, I usually use two. If I have long baits, um, I'll go a three. But yeah, and a mate of mine, Mick, um, showed me this. He actually makes his own, which I did too. But he likes to put the swivel and there was a lot of benefits to it. And he told me um, why he does it. And yeah, I sort of agreed with him. And if you haven't tried two gang hooks or even three gang hooks with swivels, um, I think True Turn do one you can buy from the tackle shops. If you don't make up your own, try it. Uh, really good. And they're basically the two setups. The only thing you could see I had a really, really small weight on the other one and I've got slightly bigger. Um, that's only because I went fishing yesterday. 
um, to show you how I usually take out my stray lines is it's usually like that, no weight. The reason why those other two are weighted up is I was fishing yesterday and there was a little bit of current so I needed some weight on and I lost some hooks so I put on a put on some sinkers to suit. But when I get out there and I've got no weight, if I do need some, what I'll end up doing is, and I've got videos on this, and uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll put a link up there to one of my videos where I use these. But these are a click sinker and they click around your line and they slide up and down your line. And, and basically I can adjust, they come in all different sizes. Um, you can see there, okay. And um, when I get out there, I don't have to have weight on. I can choose what weight I want when I get out there. But the other reason why I don't put weights on is when you're going out on the ocean, you've got, the, you're hitting the swell. Well, if you don't have weight on, there's less chance of your hooks coming off and flying around the boat. So it's a safety thing also. And basically, this comes out with me all the time. Whether I'm snapper fishing, flathead fishing, it doesn't matter. These things catch anything. The other day I was cane and snapper and nanny guy on them. The trip before or a few trips before, which I made a video, actually it was quite a few trips before. You know, we came the flathead on them. These rigs catch anything. Don't let people tell you they're for snapper. Don't tell people, let them tell you they're for bait. You know, I use these every trip I go out. I usually get one or two trips. The reason why I don't use them for any more than two trips is when you catch quite a few fish, when they come up, they spin. And what it does is it spins your line and eventually that will wear. So instead of getting a good fish and losing it because this snaps, I change them readily. If you buy them from, say, Reedy at a really good price and a really good quality, full circle hooks, you can afford to put a new one on every trip or every second trip. Um, but you don't want to lose a fish because this is twisted. So that, big bait runner, you know, just something that uh, pump and wind. You know, I've caught sharks on these, so I have a pretty substantial rod. Um, then we go to what I always take out is usually a couple overheads. Um, this is a slow pitch, so I usually put a kabura. Oh, this is something that you might want to see. That is a lure wrap. So all it is is beautiful, beautiful soft rubber and it wraps around your lure for a reason so they don't fly around your boat and they also protect your rod. Now, people call these sliders, kaburas, um, there's heaps and heaps of names. Um, I use usually a slow pitched rod and reel for these type because they're a lure that you put on the bottom and the slower you can wind and it's a very flexible rod you can see very high carbon it can bend right over but you want to just lift and wind and the slower you can work a lure like that the better it is you know just just the fish can't help themselves they're just after this octopus squid looking thing and um, I use that on a small overhead and a slow pitch jigging rod. Um, and the only other thing I really take out, and I know I've got a lot of rods, but you know, once you've got them and it's good gear, um, is the same setup, but you'll see this is on a really stiff, well, not really stiff, this will still bend over with a 20 kilo kingy on it, but um, same reel, but, I use this sort of setup for things that you want to slow pitch so or you want to float down but you want to retrieve a little bit quicker. So that's a boss from Catch, um, one of my favourite lures. When they first come out I got sent some um, samples by the company and uh, three of us used them and on the first drop the other two got fish and I didn't but uh, not bad for dropping three lures for the first ever time and two snapper come up. So basically that's my rod and reel setup. My boat's really, really basic. 
um, huge area. Um, you know, from from where you see my foot to the back there, um, that's about six or eight foot. So I keep it real basic. Um, just have shelves at the side and uh, bait tank at the back and bait board. And so very easy to fish out of. But in these pockets at the side, a um, couple things I always, or one thing I keep uh, really handy is this. And uh, I don't know whether you can see that, but it's got holes in it. And it's a tackle box, but it's got holes. Now, everything in here has come off my lines over the last few weeks or months. And it's things I use all the time. So, um, you know, your click sinkers, your catch kaburas, you know, your squid wings from catch, uh, skirt, uh, hooks, you know, squid jigs, all different colours. Now, what happens is when I use any of these, say I use a squid jig, and if I take it off and change colours or we go and do something different, what I do is this goes in here. And then when I get home, this all gets washed with fresh water or salt away and dry and dried out. So I leave it open somewhere where it's up off something and all this gets clean so I never get rusty gear. And I usually keep a little bit in here so I don't have to keep opening up my tackle boxes. Yeah, I usually keep all my knives in a nice safe place. That's actually my burly pot if I want to put it on. I do keep a bomb that I can put down if I want burly. These are very good. Now, what I do is, that's a rod holder. But not only is it a rod holder, but it can go 360 degrees. So it doesn't matter which way the wind blows. If we need to adjust the rods, we just adjust the rods. And I've got places all over the boat, including there, including there, including there, and even up there, you can see one set already there. We don't use burly all the time, but sometimes we do. And that's, um, I actually use uh, sheep nuggets as well, like sheep feed. That's dynamic lifter. I find it's cheaper than chook pellets and it smells a bit more. And uh, yeah, sometimes we find it closes, brings all the small fish in and closes out the big ones and sometimes it works differently. And then tuna oil, the good old tuna oil. And we usually put the tuna oil into a square bottle like that so it's easily used on the boat and some leads, so on, so on. Okay, just to finish off, um, I hopefully you found that a little bit interesting. Um, I do take out a fair few rods and reels, but I do have a big open boat, and I do fish solo a lot of the times. Makes my fishing day a lot easier if I've got a rod and reel for everything, at least one, sometimes two and I, it, it makes my day so much enjoyable. If I'm fishing with a buddy, a lot of the times I'll drop a couple spinning rods, um, usually the ones that I use for stray lining. Um, two things before I go. Last weekend I was fishing with Dale and Christopher. Dale's from down here, Christopher's from Canberra. And at the boat ramp, Sam and Tristan come up and said good day. Really, really nice, polite young gentleman. Um, Good to see the confidence that they come up. They were actually diving near where we were fishing. Their dad had them out in a boat, or one of their dads had them out in a boat, um, giving them a dive off a boat for the first time. Um, yeah, really nice to meet you guys and really enjoy and do what you're doing. And yeah, keep making videos. I'll uh, actually, underneath, I'll put in the descriptions a link to their um, channels. Uh, they're only just starting out, but it'd be really nice um, to see a couple of people go over and say good day. Anyway, and thank all you guys, 500 subscribers.